And the best thing about the woman was that she would go to high schools and just yell. She'd sit by the yeah. table and chain smoke and yell at students. <laughs> you, the Negro in the vest. With the beads. With the beads. I know what you're doing. I know what you're into. I'm no, I was hip. I was fly. I was dope. <laughs> I was one smart cookie and I couldn't get away with it. Exactly. I woke up on Dope Street with a needle in my arm. <laughs> We liberally, we liberally uh, took direct quotes from this woman and put them in the show. Well, we took her entire life. When we actually took every quote, the, the, the writing process slowed down. <laughs> and so we combined those two things into a 46-year-old high school freshman. And the thing we really wanted was for no one at the school to pay any attention to the fact that she was 46. Over the course of 30 shows, no one ever says, hey, that woman's 46. Um, it just is completely accepted. And... Uh, I guess the one, and the one goal for, um, was for everyone to be self-involved, which I think we achieved. Yeah, everyone's first thought to be of themselves. <laughs> How about the characters? Have you been playing a variation of uh, Jerry already? Oh, uh, yeah, since it's the only character I have. It's the same. <laughs> I like to think of her as the kind of actress who isn't versatile, you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, I'm going to play a junkie this, this time, or, you know. Yeah. So I just changed the background, but they always look the same. The character always looks the same. <laughs> you know? So. Anybody else? Well, it's an incredibly easy character for, to write for, too, because the voice is so strong that mm -hmm. it was easy to get into the voice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say by the end of the show, Amy was really starting to get the character nearly as good as Steven. I know, I forgot. <laughs> like, well, how does she sound again? What is it? <laughs> Put the gun down. <laughs> So you guys coming, uh, I want to ask about the other characters, but coming from an improvisation background, how much of what we saw was scripted and how much were you guys making up as you went along? We always had a script, but we played around a lot in front of the camera. A lot of it got in the show. She did. When well, yeah, they weren't around, always. <laughs> Ever. But uh, when they weren't on set, it was all improvised. We used that. <laughs> Amy, Amy, Amy would always do the scene, but then at the end of it, she would just keep going, and they wouldn't turn off the camera, and usually she would do something better than we yeah. thought of. She had special messages for the standards and practices. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to share one with us now, Amy? <laughs> no, I go, <clears throat> no. <laughs> Amy. Well, the scripts were all written through, like, improvisation, I'd say. Yeah, like, we, we all stood up the out, characters. We'd outline, like, um, we'd outline the show and get the beats, and then we would just go, this is what happens in this scene, and then we'd improvise it, and then... And if we, l we had a r sort of this, I don't know if it was unspoken or spoken, I certainly spoke it in my head, um, <laughs> uh, was that uh, uh, we'd all worked on shows where you had... You'd write something funny, and everybody would be laughing, and then we'd sort of get exhausted from the laughing. We'd go, okay, but what do we put in the script? We can't really say that in the script. And so our, our little unspoken rule was, whatever made us laugh would go into the script, regardless of whether it was something you could put in a script. And God bless Comedy Central, we couldn't believe the things they didn't stop oh us from God. doing. <laughs> we were like, I, I remember uh, I was in the room when you guys were writing, when you said, uh, uh, well, hey, I thought you were... Uh, no, no, I like the pole in the hole. Yeah. I'm going to take your pinky and make it all stinky. Right. And I was laughing, I was cracking up, but I didn't know you guys were going to put that in there. And when I saw it in the show, I was like, we, didn't, we, we didn't either, either actually. <laughs> <laughs> Amy said, I need something to end this scene with. And so we gave her a list of, like, five different things you can say, one of which was, I'm going to make your pinky out. Thank you. <laughs> and, but we said yeah, specifically, we you must an get option. another take besides uh, that. Uh, you uh, must, uh, absolutely. <laughs> and then we watched five different takes of pinky out stinky. <laughs> pinky out stinky. Five. Pinky out stinky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amy? I was in London at that time, and there was a conference call between myself and uh, I think myself. Eileen Katz, who was the head of pro programming, who was here the key tonight, person actually. In getting the show on the air. Um, and I think the standards and practice per person, the head of business affairs legal part, and the head of uh, communications and press, all about that scene. And uh, that line. the more we talked about it, the more everyone realized, like, of course, it's perfectly okay. And so it got on there. After you say the word banana, after a while, yeah. it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <Banana>. <laughs> Innocuous. 
so in general, there was not a lot of uh, difficulty getting stuff by the by Comedy Central. Well, th there was a lot of discussion. Always, but I think uh, the the woman who heads up standards and practices, who couldn't be here tonight, unfortunately, who was a big fan of the show, named Renee Presser, she was really good about always looking at sort of the big picture and what was the context. And once we had created these characters, if we were faithful to who those characters were, then she she gave us a lot of leeway. So there were some things that we could. The only do. thing I remember that they said no to we. Were, we came up with the line first. I don't know why. We just said it minutes left. And the line was, that albino ran off with the midget. No. <laughs> that albino stole my dwarf. Oh, that's what it was. That albino stole my dwarf. So then we said, well, naturally, we need an albino and a dwarf. So, and, uh, so they started doing, uh, John, who would do the casting, started looking for, like, around New York area for albinos, for available albinos and dwarves. Not many, unfortunately. No, not many. But we found some, and then Comedy Central, for some mysterious reason, said you cannot have an albino and a dwarf. Like yeah. Yeah. So offend, like, the uh, albino, albino and dwarf, dwarf community. Yeah. So we had and to change the line, too. You know, there's quotas for these things, and there had already been a lot of albinos and dwarves on the man show. So I think they were used up for that week. So we had to change the line to, that madman took my hobo. <laughs> Don't have the same kind of ring. Which I heard rippled, the laughter rippled across the country. Yeah. Rippled. And filthy Jew diary. They wouldn't let us say filthy Jew diary. We could say dirty Jew diary, right? <laughs> You're out of context. That doesn't get any laughs in this room either. So. Um, oh, and also, uh, there were two things. We had, we had one, the one character that I think we all really wanted to get into a script that we never got into a script. And uh, we got mild resistance at first. And then we brought them around. We eventually had to cut it for, for time was... Um, in the episode where the boy, the blind boy, wants to become a member of the football team, he gets a lawyer from a, a, a law firm oh, right. that only represents the disabled. And all the lawyers are disabled also. And this particular <laughs> lawyer's disability is that he's retarded. <laughs> turn it up! Turn it up! 